Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the West Coast Wave Gospel Chat Line. I am your host for this evening, Miss D, and I'm coming from the very, it's windy out here, y'all, in Phoenix, Arizona. So glad you all joined me on this evening. Content, we going to have a great time on this evening because I feel a shift in this atmosphere. The spirits on here are straight up right. You can tell. And I know it's going to be an awesome, awesome uh, conversation on tonight because the enemy has been fighting so hard this, this at each of us probably on today. But, honey, he's beneath my feet. Uh, G, uh, God sent his son Jesus a long time ago to fight for me for this day, baby. So I'm ready to rock and roll with y'all on today. Woo! Y'all ain't ready Amen. for me today. Y'all ain't ready for me. <laughs> but listen, before we get started, I have to let you know the ground rule, and that's simply to respect the speaker. Please do not talk while others are speaking. As a courtesy, we ask everyone to please mute your phones as the interview is going forth. The Bible tells us to please do unto others as you we want them to do unto us, and it also states we need to do things in decency and in order. With that said, for the first maybe 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to interview our wonderful ladies. Um, we even have a special added sister on the phone. Thank you, Lord. And um, we're going to see who's on the line, give you all opportunity to speak with the ladies. And we're just going to enjoy God. We're going to enjoy this fellowship on tonight because that's what God called us to do, baby, is love on one, of, one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. I'm feeling this thing already. Listen, but I need to let y'all know the newcomers to the um, conversation on Thursday nights that we are a family here on the West Coast Wave Gospel Chat Line. We respectfully agree to disagree. We preach. We cry. But at the end of the session, baby, we all come back with nothing but love. I got nothing but love for you, baby. And so with that said, I'm going to ask that, Miss Deborah, I want to ask that you uh, start us off in a word of prayer, please. Oh, God. Uh, oh, wait, that's tough for me today. Uh, okay, um, let me clear my, little, clear my little mind, first of all. Clear it, baby. First of Help all, we, we, we thank you uh, for this platform. Let me say that first for yes, the time uh, of sharing and caring and reflecting on our loved ones, and um, this is a way of keeping their memory alive and for helping us to uh, remember them in our hearts, in our minds, and to also let the world know of their contribution, not just to the world, but, you know, to our families and to everyone else. Dear God, our Father, we come today to say thank you for this time of reflection. God, we thank you for Miss Dana and for um, Sheriff Leander for giving us this time um, to come together uh, we ask you that you bring our hearts and our minds in and that you block out all of the events of the day. God, we know that you are a God that can do all things. God, we ask you that you bring healing and peace to any situation in any of our lives that may be uh, not so uh, good right now at this time. God, we trust you and we love you. God, we ask you to bless bereaved families. We ask you to bless those in hospitals and convalescent homes. God, even those incarcerated, for all those, God, that took the time just to call in tonight, just to uh, hear and to share. Uh, we hope that anything, something that we say will bless the people that took the time to call. Uh, we ask you to bless us all in our respective cities, God, because we know that you're a God of everywhere. And yes. then, God, uh, at the end of this call, we ask that uh, you continue to give us peace in our own lives. And in your name, we pray all these things. Amen. 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 I, I just thought that would help lift a little load off of you, Miss Deborah. That's all. I will be all right. <laughs> that will be all right. Oh, yeah, I know you will. Listen, y'all, again, I thank you all for joining those who just uh, joined in. Please, I, we ask that you all would mute your phones as we go forth. Y'all, we're going to have a good time on tonight. Um, usually I have a set 
uh, amount of questions to ask, but I'm going to just flow on tonight because, like I said, I really feel a shift in the atmosphere because this enemy, he thinks he's slick, but he ain't doing nothing, baby, but he, he's our stepping stools on today, y'all. Hello, somebody. Yeah, man. I feel this thing on tonight. We have on tonight, I want to thank you, uh, ladies, um, Miss Judy, and she even has her sister, Miss June. Amen. They are the, yes, honey. They are the daughters of the wonderful Reverend Julius Cheeks. And then Amen. we have the beautiful Miss Deborah Morris Lagan. She is the daughter of the one and only, the wonderful Mr. Joe Lagan, baby. Woo! We going okay, in on that, tonight, y'all. That I am one of the daughters. Of one of them. Yeah. Oh Lord, Amen. that is right. Yeah, let's get that right. Let's get that right. I am. Wait, how many daughter. of it? How many of you all? There are quite a few. Um, uh -oh. There are quite a few. Okay. <laughs> I'll just Wait, Miss Deborah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say the same. Just one. I'm honored. To just be one of them. Okay. The daughter. Yes, God. So I'm grateful. Well, all right. Look, my daddy, my daddy wasn't no legend, but I'm one of one of the daughters of his too. Hello, yeah, somebody. we are. Listen, here. <laughs> Listen, I'm so grateful for you, ladies. Again, I say thank you and welcome to the West Coast Wave. You are now family. Miss June and Miss Judy, we got a brother on here, Deacon Frank. He say once you get a a, a, a hit of this West Coast Wave, baby, it's like crack. You gotta come back, baby. Amen. We go. <laughs> we love on here. We love. That's all we can do. That's all we can do. So listen, y'all. We gon' we gonna get into this, and we're going to enjoy one another, and we gonna learn about how it was under the roof of Mr. Joe Lagan and Mr. Reverend Julius Cheeks. So we're going to start with the Cheeks, with uh, Miss, Miss June and Miss Judy, and we're going to ask that you briefly uh, introduce yourselves, and, and then Miss uh, Deborah Lagan Morris, we're going to ask that you briefly uh, introduce yourself, and then we'll go ahead and go into our conversation. Okay. Well, June is the oldest. So, June, you want to go first? Yes, my name is June Cheeks Debris, and I am the oldest of the Reverend Jesus Cheeks' daughters. Awesome. Hey, Amen. And she's a little shy. I, I forced, okay. <laughs> I forced her because I wanted every. Oh, I'm Judy, by the way. I'm the younger daughter. But um, I June is so much like my dad. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Those two were like twins. And June, mm -hmm. I like to stay in the background, but I just wanted everybody to know, um, you know, she knows the personal side of Daddy, and, and, and she knows, you know, his heart. And I just think it's so important that people um, who benefited from my father's ministry, I wanted them to know that, Daddy was the kind of daddy, if, if you know, June would, would share with me how, you know, she had a scripture she wanted, you know, explained or whatever. Uh, she'd just pick up the phone and say, Daddy, Daddy, what does this mean? And, and he would be right. Like, <laughs> ministry wasn't on the stage. His ministry was with his daughters, and he showed us so much mm. love. Mm. So, and, you know, the same, and uh, that's why Deborah and I bond so much, because you know, when, you're, when, you're, when your father, especially with girls, you know, when your dad is traveling all the time and, you know, sharing himself with the world, you know, we hold in our hearts, you know, the love but also a yearning and also an ache. So um, children of these, these gospel people, you know, we, we, uh, you know, we have to kind of um, really concentrate on the blessings that they were in our personal lives. Amen. You know, Amen. It, so, Amen. And it affects everybody in different ways, you know. So June, I always say to her, because she says to me, oh, you're just like Daddy. And I say, no, you're just like Daddy. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that, that side, so she is funny. My Daddy was funny. She, oh. Daddy planted those seeds in both of us, really. And, and she, yes, I just wanted to share 
with the world, you know, the love that I feel for her and oh. is really embraced by my dad's love for us. And um, and so even though she's shy, I just want the world to know that that's <laughs> <laughs> That's your big That's sister. Beautiful. Go ahead on, that baby. Is it's all good. That is beautiful. That's and Miss Deborah. I love that. I love that. As Miss Judy said, we actually were introduced by a mutual friend on Facebook, Robin Ritchie, who I think is listening, possibly. Um, he said, there's someone you need to know because you guys' history uh, is so much the same. I heard that with Julia's Cheeks, and I knew that was like Dad's mentor. And so I was so pleased to meet her, and I thought she'd be this grand diva-type person, and she is certainly just the opposite. I had an opportunity to meet her and be in one of her videos here in L.A. And she all was right. just down to earth like we had been knowing each other all the time. And um, she's someone that I'm blessed, even though I do have seven sisters. Uh, I can talk to Judy about stuff, daddy stuff, and, you know, how did you handle this and that. Uh, one thing that Judy said that is very true is uh, my dad, my memories are, are of being very young. Dad left when I was five years old to go on the road professionally. And once you go on the road professionally, you come home uh, – every now and then and mm-hmm. I mean you, you I, I just used to you go between feeling proud and then you feel um, sometimes kind of neglected because you know every birthday mm-hmm. they're not here or every wedding every uh, graduation parents night and you know your prom and your children being born you know that's a parent that is not there and you have to grow into a spiritual maturity to understand that they are on a God-given, divine, predestined mission mm. to take the gospel all over the world. And so I was his daughter, but I was also his biggest fan when he was on stage, and I understood mm-hmm. that he was called to do what he did, but on a human level, I kind of wish that I had spent more time or that he had spent more time, that I saw him more. And when I got of age, I think 15 or 16, I placed myself in his path. When I was able to fly, I would go out and I would go on tour with the group because that was my way, you know, of really having father-daughter time. And I'm now so grateful that I did that and that I spent that time because those memories are so priceless and precious for me. Amen. Let me, now both of you, you say, you know, um, I'm listening to you ladies and, and you talk about the ache, you know, the pain that they're always gone. Did, um, and this question is for both of you and both can answer, all three can answer. Did you all ever share with your fathers how you hurt when they're gone so long? And if so, what did they say? Well, in my case, um, I relished every moment I spent with my dad, and right. um, I didn't want to waste time, <laughs> that precious time <laughs> I had with him, crying. And, and, oh. uh, so, but he, Daddy just made the moment, he filled the moment with so much love and so much fun. I mean, we used to go on long walks, and, you know, t- Daddy was so funny that you didn't feel the sadness. And, and, and the thing is, when I, I mean, I wrote a book about Daddy, and um, beautiful book. <laughs> thank you, Deborah. And I, um, when I did the research on it, it was actually quite therapeutic, and it healed me of some of the wow. things that I, you know, all my life I thought, oh God, you know, you know, you, you kind of think when they're gone, oh, he doesn't love me, blah blah blah. And I remember one day, I think it was somebody from. I don't know if it was the Pilgrim Jubilees or the Soul Star, somebody, because, you know, all these people become your uncles, right? And I said, right. <laughs> right. I must have been about seven or eight, and, you know, I said, oh, my daddy don't love me. He ain't here. <laughs> and they said, don't you ever say that about your daddy. Your daddy loves you. He said, he's spreading the gospel, and don't you ever say that. And that kind of shook me in my boots. But when I was writing the book and I did my research, and I went through how much he suffered on the road, you know? Oh, I mean, yes. 
if he could, if he was lucky, and also the the journey he took from being this wide-eyed, innocent little boy from Spartanburg, South Carolina, doing what he knew God had called him to do, right. but being ensnared and sometimes tempted by all the things, the negative things that were out there, you know, he had to deal with that, and he had to deal with the Jim Crow laws, and he had to do all that. But when I right. saw Daddy was never bitter. Daddy never sat down and said, baby, you know, when I was out on that road today, a white cop pulled me over, and I was... <laughs> He never, you know, he never expressed that. And then I admired him even more because I thought, you know, he's not having a pity party about anything. That, that's what I love about that generation of God. Mm, mm. You know, it was a you know, Miss, Miss Judy, it's so wonderful that you bring, and you can feel the love and the passion in your voice about your dad and and I'm I'm just imagining, you know, him. I'm way younger and but I have had to research myself about these gentlemen. I had the opportunity to actually take my mother to see Mr. Lagan once before. But thinking about the negative things that were out there and that they come across and to hear that he was never bitter. Right. But this generation today is so full of anger and negativity in the gospel, you feel me? And I don't know how we even got there, but to um, hear your dad's story is so refreshing. And, and I'm going to go back to where you say you want the world to hear it. That world needs to get a touch of that book. What's the name of your book? Oh, it's called Love and Honor, The Life of Reverend. Love and Honor. Love and Honor. <laughs> side of daddy you know it's, it's a very intimate book you know like a lot of uh, books have been written about the historical side of the whole uh, you know gospel setup and you know they go through different decades you know they call mm -hmm. the 50s the golden age of gospel and whatever but I I personalized my dad's story because this is what he was to me you know mm -hmm. and it wasn't selfish. It wasn't only about me. I knew that if I really an honest picture, uh, a portrait of his journey, you know, because just because you're called to sing gospel or called to preach doesn't mean your journey is going to be flawless. It doesn't mean that you're not going exactly. to all kind of hills and, and valleys, you know. But my dad he did it honestly. I mean, he didn't try to hide anything about his life. <laughs> he couldn't hide it from God, you know. So he just, uh -oh. and that's true faith. And when you understand the grace of God, and when you understand that when God puts a calling on your life, he's not, he's going to be there for you. He's not going to give you anything that you can't bear. Right. You have the, you mm -hmm. have the choice to go left or right, you know, but he's, you know, he's going to be right there with you. And Daddy knew that. And, 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 you know, because he knew that, he and I could just be around each other. He and June could be around each other. And we didn't have to sit down and say, Daddy, you know, I really missed you. He knew that. He knew right. that. He knew that he was right. sacrifice. He knew that when, when, when God called him to do this, God was just going to take care of his daughters. You know, hmm. God was just going to take care of his daughters. And I, you know, gosh, we had a very strict service. But when we got around Daddy, Daddy just, well, he was, he was more lenient with June, wasn't he, June? Uh, you say that, but <laughs> somewhat, yes. <laughs> he was. He, he would take June everywhere to have fun, and he said, Judith, you stay home, you know. But, you know, he, he was, but June was older than me, and, and I think he kind of he kind of protected me from a lot of stuff, but but he and he June used to really hang. Trust me, tell him, June. <laughs> well, <laughs> we did. Uh, Dad and I had a lot of fun together. Um, he could make you laugh. Um, uh, you know, I've I've heard uh, uh, some people say, you know, he, Reverend Chief can make you laugh at a funeral. He was the kind that was, you know, he was upbeat. He didn't want, he didn't like to see people sad. Uh, and mm -hmm. so he was always upbeat, and whenever we were together, I mean, I just wanted to act like him, and I did. I, I did act like him, and um, so. But he was, but he was, he had a loving heart. He had a kind heart, 
and you just and you knew that, and he made you feel that way. Uh, if you were around him long enough, you know you could feel it. Um, and the times that I was able to see him growing up was uh, not it was only when he came to town. I was you know I didn't go uh, to see him when he was out of town, but when he was in town, I did uh, see him. And those were like it was like Christmas. It was like Christmas whenever he came to town, even in July, <laughs> it was like Christmas to me. Uh, because I was going yeah. to see my dad, and uh, but the, he was uh, he he I loved him, and he was a wonderful man. He really was. Mm-hmm. He knew the word. He knew the word, and you could call on him. Um, I guess one of the fondest memories that I have is several times I've called him. But one night, this I'd say this was about uh, two or three o'clock in the morning, and we were sitting around talking, and. Um, we were we were discussing the word, and we just came to a crossroads, and I said, "Hold up!" I picked up the phone and I called my daddy. <laughs> and he got up out of bed. He got up out of bed, and he started talking. He wasn't reading the word from the book, but what wow. he said was the word, and I'm just like, I just tell you where to go. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it was just a memory that I said that if you ever wanted to know anything concerning the word, just call Reverend Cheeks. He got it in his head. He has it. He knows it. Oh, and man. That, was, yeah. that is and awesome. That was, yeah. well, what about you, Miss Deborah? Did you ever well, tell Mr. Lagan that you miss a uh, I used to tell Mr. Lagan everything. Uh, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> Uh, our relationship was was kind of not like that. I I would never want him to feel guilty about us. First of all, okay. like Judy said, my mom raised us up so spiritually that we knew that God would take care of us, and he did. Mm-hmm. We never wanted for anything because daddy was on the road. My mom didn't bother daddy about you know money and child support and none of that because everybody that knew Joe Lagun knew that he was called to do what he did and that he loved doing it. So nobody wanted to disturb that. At that time, we didn't call it a ministry. We just say that's, you know, what he loved to do. He was called to do it. And can you imagine if you sat down and said, Daddy, you know, I want you to come home because, you know, I'm sad. Why would you want to stop anybody from doing something that they enjoy so much? I could be with Daddy. He could be sick. He could be hoarse. He could be depressed, upset. But the minute he stepped on that stage, those lights came on, he took that mic out because Daddy never sang too much in the mic. He'd take it out the stand. He transformed into a whole different person. So there was no doubt that that was what he loved to do. And when you saw how the people responded to him, I mean, nobody in their right mind would say, you know, we just want you to come home and be a regular dad. I actually was always proud I didn't have a regular dad, but, you know, no. I think you want the best of of both worlds. And the only thing I would tell him, one thing about him, he was nosy, so he kept up with everybody and what you were doing, who you was dating. And I'd be like, how you know that? And uh, he'd go, oh, you know, they tell me everything. I know everything about my girls. And, I, you know, that part of it. He was interested, and if you called him, he would generally uh, answer the phone or he would call you back. We didn't call him and bug him about money because, like Judy said, at that time, groups were committed to the ministry of singing gospel, and it took a huge sacrifice for them to stay out there. Just like uh, Judy said about her dad, uh, you know, the stories of them eating Spam and Vienna sausages and sardines, and I think I shared this with you, Miss Dana, crackers and, you yes, know, ma'am. going to the corner store, getting some bologna and, you know, <laughs> sleeping in cars and singing in the hotels that you could not even stay in. And it's so different now in that <clears throat> if you try and book a group, they say, well, we know we'll only stay in a Holiday Inn. These groups couldn't even go in a Holiday Inn. Wow. Yet they could entertain Caucasian people there. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was still their commitment was to go. 
Their commitment was never, you know, I'm not going back there no more. You stop by the police. They don't give you your money. They call you the N-word or whatever. They never stopped. Now, yeah. groups, it only takes a little bit to get them disturbed, discouraged, and distracted. And they're like, you know what, I'm not doing this, you know. Because and I think about, I just thought about, uh, we call him Uncle Harvey Watkins, the song, It's In My Heart. It has to be deep in your heart, and that's in anything that you do for God, in that you're going to do it regardless whether the money. I have seen Daddy, 10 people at the show, they, Joe, we don't have your money. He said, oh, I looked at the crowd and knew that. He used to say it was <laughs> slim. That's the word that he used to say, the crowd is slim. And Daddy would say, you know what, we're going to sing, because the few people that came, they came to see us sing. And it's so different now in that, and, you know, we live in a different era where it takes more money to make it. But their thing, they would drive far. You know what? No flying. You didn't get an airline ticket to nowhere. They drove in cars and went to these shows. And, you know, they, they got them. Sometimes people would send them the money later. But they would bless the people like they had got all their money. And I was just proud, and I'm still today just proud to be a daughter of Joe Lagan, not because he has awards or this or that, but just because I, I, I'm the daughter of a man that loved what he did and he gave his all until he left here. He mm. gave everything. Even several times we had the daddy, you need to retire once you come and let us take care of you. Oh, no. He didn't want to hear it. His statement, uh, uh, quartet singers don't retire. We die doing oh, what yeah. we love. Is that not what Clay Graham did? The exact same thing. You cannot pull them off the road and make them go home. Deborah, so that, mom, that's my thing. Deborah, you're there. Well, listen, out of let me zone. ask you this, um, ladies. Um, this, what you're sharing with us is so intimate, and, and you're painting very vividly pictures of your lives and what these men were and, and living, you know, as you could with them. Um, tell us about the very first time you recall, if you can, um, that you saw your dad perform. What was your feelings? What type of emotions ran through you on that particular day? (laughs) Well, okay, this is Judy. First of all, from the time I could walk, I was (laughs) on right behind my daddy mimicking his every move. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's cute. When I talk to people, like I have a friend who was a fan of my dad. He had two loves of his life, my dad and Sam Cooke. And, you know, when he, because I'm so used to seeing daddy as my daddy, I said, I said to my friend George, I said, George, what is it, you know, because everybody thought, man, your daddy was, Fierce, your daddy used to scare me. And I said, well, what, what was that like? And George said, you remember Dorothy Love Coates? I said, yeah, that woman used to scare me. He said, well, that's what it was like. It was wow. terrifying for, for the people who, 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 who he ministered to. But for me, I, you know, I never, you know, they have these things on Facebook, you know, if you could talk to anybody, you know, who would it be? And I would, I would really love to just, I don't know, sit down and talk with Daddy and talk about what it felt like to have an anointing that strong come through, yeah. you know, mm. the lives of people in that way. And then he could, I mean, I remember Joe LaGarde saying to me one time, he said, man, I used to sit down and cut the food with June. We'd be laughing and talking in the, in the, in the, in the, in the hotel, get to the show. That man would get up there and tear the house up. He said, and I was <laughs> like, I can't believe this is the same man. Same done. man. Wow. So, but for me, I never really kind of caught that. You know, I mm-hmm. just saw Daddy. Do you know what I mean? And maybe that's just being a little girl, you know. But I, I wish I could have fainted in the spirit and done all that stuff that, that <laughs> you know, did. But for me, he was always just Daddy. Awesome. And what about you, Miss June? Do you remember your first time seeing your dad perform? Yes, in South Carolina at the high school there. He was scheduled to go to sing there. 
And I wanted to go, and I knew, I remember begging my mom uh, to let me go. And (laughs) she finally said, okay, you can go. And when I got there, um, I was outside, and I told someone to if they would go and get him for me. And he came down, and he said, oh, that's my baby. She's here. And so I went in, and uh, I mean, I just... um, I don't know. I just. I don't know. I just felt like I was. Just, I was just somebody, just really. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I went in, and let me tell you, I was totally surprised at the way as they began to sing, the groups were coming on, and and I'm just wondering, well, when is my daddy coming up? And when he got there. Uh, he walked on stage, he stood there, and people just started screaming and yelling. And I'm wow. like, well, why? I mean, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't understand why he was screaming and yelling like that. And when he started to, I mean, when he started to sing, it was, I mean, it was, it was just like, I was looking at him like, that's my daddy? <laughs> mm. Wow. I mean, you know, if you could, the people were just, I mean, people were just falling out, mm-hmm. and, just, okay. and I'm just like, just look at this. Just look at this. You know, and the effect he had on people as he sang. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You could feel it. You could, you could feel it. Yeah. And I mean, just, my heart was just overflowing. It was just, my heart was just, I mean, it was, it was almost, a, I could feel like it could just burst. Oh, my God. Because I was looking at my daddy for the first time and this is what he does this is his job and he was I meant in the words that he sang and you could feel it and I felt I was very very elated that to call him my dad and the people were just all over the place and again I'm not looking in surprise like I mean, I know the effect that he had on me, but that was my dad. But I'm looking at these other people like, look at the effect that he's having on these other people out here. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was it was really, really um, a time for me to just realize that I had a wonderful dad. And he and I, and afterwards, I, you know, I just said to him, I said, Dad, he said, what is it, baby? I said, I cannot sing. <laughs> I cannot sing. Uh oh. But 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 um. I, just just to see just to see your dad up there like that young girl for the first time, and he is tearing the house down, and you hmm. know that's my dad. That's my dad. Yeah. Real talk, girl. You yeah. giving me goosebumps. That's my daddy, baby. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Well, what about you, Miss Deborah? Do you recall the first time you saw Mr. Joe Lagan perform? Uh, you know, I was blessed in that before Daddy actually went the word professional, I said I was going to stop using after last week. <laughs> Where is <laughs> Mr. Archie? But when before they while they were still here before they left mm-hmm. to go on the road professionally, I'll say it that way. They used to rehearse at our house, so oh. for me it was awesome to see them to start learning the song. And I remember the uh, Papa and Sugar the Hightower brothers and Johnny Martin and everybody was a teenager, everybody getting a part and practicing and Daddy's supposed to be babysitting us and, you know, we babysitting ourselves. You know, he was giving us uh, cereal with pet milk, not realizing he's supposed to put some water in it and we had to kind of make it, had to make out. We only five and, you know, had to kind of find our own way because they was trying to get those songs together. But on 54th and Central, uh, we would always go because that was our time with him. And mm-hmm. I think that's why I love quartet so much today. I grew up from a child in it. And from watching, if you watch, like with the Zion Messages, if you watch them rehearse, 
and then work the kinks out of stuff. And then when you see them go on stage and see that they nailed it, everybody stayed on their part, you know all the moves, you know when to dip, you know when to turn, you know when to do all of that. And when you see that they got it from the beginning of the song to when they present it to the world, you'd be like, wow, when you see the full production. And that was me. But for me, it was always pride uh, because, like Miss June said, we saw the effect that they had on, not they had, because it was not them. We saw the effect that the anointing in them had yes. on people. You would see yes. people crying. You would see men crying, older people. You see people shouting. You, you could feel that people were being delivered by this music, and you would know that God mm. himself was using this little man <laughs> to to you know to bless these people, and you know the acknowledgement you get from people, you know it comes and goes. And, oh, that's so and so, that's Joe's daughter, or whatever. But when you see the effect that they have on the crowd, and I would tell him, he would always say, "How did I do? How do we do? How do we do?" I'd be mm-hmm. like, "You killed him tonight, Daddy." And sometimes oh. I was also I was also the critic. I'd be like, "You know that song." Y'all shouldn't have sung that song. They didn't know it. Musicians went Uh-oh. on their part. The drama was too slow. And he would always say, one thing about you, you will always tell the truth. And I'm glad I grew up to know what's quality in music. And it's not quality, but it's basically what I like. Um, and what's just – things are different now with technology. But those groups – the clowns rehearse every day. They would come for rehearsal every day religiously, and they would nail those songs. And when they went out in public, if the song wasn't ready, they said, no, we're not going to do that this time. It ain't ready. They would perfect that stuff. But like Miss June, there is no pride like the pride. Even now with him, you know, being in glory, when people say, oh, you know, that's Joe's daughter, the pride that we have, nobody can take that away. And I think yeah. that's for anybody that has a, a parent of any kind of prominence. The pride that you have, aside from the human part, is, God, I wish I had spent more time. You know, I wish he was here to give me away at the wedding. You understand that they're wow. on assignment, and you, I mean, you don't, you, you can't even be mad at that. You can't even be mad at that. Listen, I want to, it, we, honey, we can go on and on with this conversation, but I want to give others a chance to talk to you. I like that. I really do. I like what you're talking about. Uh-oh, what happened? Point in. Pouring into us and telling us about your dads and things like that, because um, me, myself, I didn't have what you had. And this makes me feel so, you know, I didn't get to know my dad until about a few months before he died. And my dad was also a quartet singer. And um, I wish I would have had that love, because when I saw my daddy sing for the first time, I'm like, you, Miss June, that's my dad. That's my daddy. Yeah. That's right. You know that's that? Daddy. Yeah. That was my dad. And so Even I'm so Even if you was mad at him. Even if you was mad yeah. at him, still, you still that pride you just could not ever, you know, you could do nothing that actually replaces that. That's it, n- nothing, and it's and it's so wonderful to hear that. So this is a a two part question for each of you. We gonna toot some horns, toot toot. Hey, hey, toot toot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Miss June and Miss Judy, three words. I want you to describe Reverend Julius Cheeks and then three words describe the sensational Nightingales and then Miss Deborah, three words to describe Mr. Joe Lagan and three words to describe the mighty clouds of joy. Wow. Okay. Uh, to describe Daddy? Three words. Okay, honest, 
Um, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's honest too, right? You honest. You got that honestly. <laughs> and um, caring. Awesome. And the Nightingales, dedicated, because they're still out there. They just celebrated, what, their 70th anniversary or something? I talk to JoJo all the time, and he's my, my favorite uncle, and June and I. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're very devoted and dedicated and um, just, I don't know, still blessed to be out there doing it. And Amen. Amen. So, and sincere about, you know, what they're doing. Amen. Miss June, you want to chime in on anything? Uh, well, I'd like to say three words about my dad. Something that Go ahead, girl. And that is he was loving, he was mm-hmm. caring, and he most of all was talented. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yes. I love it. I love it. Well, that's amazing. You ladies, and you know what? You had to come from some good stock because your spirits are so beautiful, the three of you. Oh, Just thank beautiful. You. And it, it, it comes to thank you. My mama was the bomb.com, baby. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, it, it, it beams, your radiance beams through the phone, you know? And I'm just like, wow, these are some wonderful, I call you a, a wonder woman. These are some wonder women, baby, because it's coming through this phone, and I love it, and I'm so humbled, and I'm so appreciative for your time to give to us on this evening, just sharing the love about some real legends, baby. Woo, woo, woo. Miss Deborah, hey. <laughs> Um, when I think about, because see, like, in contrast to Miss June and Miss Judy, we didn't have daddy like the father figure. Uh-huh. Daddy said to me one time, I was upset with him about something, whatever, you know, I never, I never uh, learned how to be a dad. I didn't know how to be a father. I, you know, uh, I had kids young, and then I went on the road, and you know, uh, you know, he, he was not sorry, but he acknowledged that, and I'm grateful for that because you know, for Amen. Alone, I couldn't, I couldn't really say. Well, you know, if you was a real father, you would have called me for my birth. You know, I don't remember birthdays, Debbie. You got to call and let me know. So even <laughs> flawed, even flawed. One thing I loved about Joe Lagan, he was a real deal, holy spirit. He mm. would own his stuff. If he messed up, yep, Deborah, I sure did say that. I messed up. You know, I'm sorry. You know, uh, what can I do? But I All love right. that about him. He was genuine in that. And one thing that we, I think, I pick up even from um, the Cheek Sisters is we learn to love them, and I mean learn because it comes over time. I'm 62 at this point, and it hasn't always been this way. We learn oh. to love them for who they were, uh, how they were, not who they were, their name, how they were. And we didn't hold nothing, you know, well, you should have done this. And, you know, I called you three times, you didn't return the call. Whatever you know I'm doing this, okay. I mean, what can you say? Uh, right. My three words for daddy would have been he was powerful because he was a man of very small stature. Uh-huh. But that voice, baby, was major. Daddy had a bo- People used to say, how can all that voice come out of that little bitty man? <laughs> <laughs> he was powerful. He was anointed um, in that the people could immediately feel what he sang. And I love that about him. Almost as soon as they got through the first two lines of the song, people were standing up clapping. You almost Love. never went to a, a Clouds concert and people sat down. I used to watch people because some people are kind of hard. You know, they'd be like, well, let me see what they're going to do. Even singers, because singers are the hardest on each other. And uh-huh. before you know what they over there, they clap in and whatever, because gospel music is infectious. And mm-hmm. it is soul food, it will reach down and grab you, it will heal your hurt, and it will, God made it that way, that's what it is supposed to do. And the last thing is appointed, 
Um, that he knew before he left Troy, Alabama, he would always say, I love his little stories. And uh, like Judy, I'm going to be writing about some of them uh, because they're very personal to me because he shared them with me. Uh, okay. He used to say, you know, when I was in Troy and picking cotton, I'd say, I'm going to go to California and I'm going to say, all and right. Going to, that's, what, that's exactly what he did. So to know as a child what you want to do, have that dream, realize that dream, achieve greatness. Yes, and Lord. be at the top of your game. What a feeling that must be. Because most of us, and I say us because I'm in this class of people, still trying to find our purpose. You know, we, we hit and miss here. We doing this and doing that, helping here and doing this. But our true purpose, many of us don't know our true purpose till it's almost our time to leave earth. So we've wasted Jeez. a lot of time. We've wasted a lot of time, but like I said, he was appointed for that time. When it comes to the Mighty Clouds of Joy, I'm going to say they were history-making. As I watched the Zion Messengers, I said, Daddy, here you go all over again with the New Jack Generation. Um, Jimmy <laughs> the Kim, New Jack talk. Generation. Yeah, I watched the comments. I say the people still talking trash just like they did when you was on the Soul Train, Daddy. Ain't nothing new. Wow. Uh, they were trendsetters in their clothing, in their music, in their presentation, in singing out the box at the clubs and all that. They caught flat, but they did it. And my my prayer for this group, because... Um, I want this legacy to continue, and my prayer is that it does that through whoever deems it possible. Uh, I want to shout out Lil J and the Spiritual Boys who recorded one of Daddy's songs on his upcoming album to have this young man uh, look up to Daddy enough to want to record one of his songs and keep that music going. That's what a legacy is to me. It's not with the daughters. The legacy is in those that sing and keep the music going. So I just wish for them longevity and for the legacy of this man and the man that he so idolized. Whenever anybody interviewed Daddy, when they asked him who his mentors were and his idols, first name come out of his mouth was Reverend Julius Cheeks. So for my dad to look up to this man, he had to be somebody. Amen. What? Hey, there were this- two- there was mutual respect and love between uh, Daddy and Joe Lagon. I mean, they there was no jealousy, there was no you know rivalry. They they loved each other and they respected each other's gift, you know. And um, mm-hmm. but I wish that the new generation of gospel singers or, or singers, period, would just learn. You know, it's not about the vessel. It's about the gift. You know. So exactly. Oh my God. There's no point. Ms. Miss Judy, you huh? just hit something. I'm I'm sorry, but you just hit something. I made a post yesterday on Facebook, and it simply stated, uh, talking about your gift. Mm-hmm. Get off your gift. That God-given gift is loaded, baby. Yeah. Yeah. All you have to do is use it. It's him who gave us that gift. Yeah. And that Let gift, it room for you. it'll make room for you. Let it it'll put you. you in front of great men. And That's so, Miss Deborah, you, you mentioned in the Zion Messengers and, and you mentioned in how the same thing happened to um, the, the clouds and, and Mr. Lagan. So, you, you know, y'all, what y'all doing to me is actually truly helping me because uh, I take things very personal when it comes to the Zion Messengers, you know? And so I'm learning how to continue to remain humble and and keep my mouth closed and pray harder. God is constantly building my character. And so to know that that this ain't brand new, all this hatred and stuff. It's not brand new. So I'm I'm thankful because you ladies just helped me with something. I, I, I promise you I was just talking to Elder about it earlier today, mm-hmm. just talking to him. So I'm so grateful. Y'all don't even know how much you've helped me just just in the little time we've spent together. I'm so grateful, so grateful. But what I want to do is 
thank you again for uh, your time. But I want to open up the floor. Oh, yes, you're so welcome. So welcome. I'm beyond grateful. I want to open up this floor and ask others if they have any questions, comments, or concerns at this time before we go into our announcements. And we're going to have some prayer service. Miss Miss Judy and Miss June, one of y'all want to pray before we get off this call? Uh, June, you're the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to. You don't have to. I'm just. I, we we will pray. We gonna pray together. We gonna pray. But I did. <laughs> but I'm gonna allow others to ask y'all some questions now. So anybody who has, we gonna take just a few, and then we are gonna go on through these announcements, and we gonna pray, and we gonna have a great night. A good time mm-hmm. in the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I want to uh, read just a quick paragraph out of Judy's book. And by the way, that's a great book. And if it's it is like awesome. Really, you should get it. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to say, it says, Daddy shared his knowledge with anyone who wanted to learn. I remember talking to June just before we were to perform in Augusta, Georgia, for the first time, said Joe Lagan. The auditorium had kind of a pit in the front of the stage. It wasn't deep but it was just below the stage. He told me how the stage was built and what to do. June said, Joe, when you guys get to Augusta, when you're singing, pick you a song that you're really pushing hard, a driving song, and get two or three of your guys with you, and y'all back up and jump off the stage at the same That's time. That's where he got that Just from. keep That's on singing from. as you hit the floor. And we did just that and tore the house down, did exactly what he said to do. I will never forget that. And that's Joe Lagan speaking. And Joe Lagan, uh, uh, when you talk about the love that he had, he and uh, Reverend Cheeks, it's obvious, you know, that, that Joe calls him his mentor, and Reverend Cheeks loved Joe. And another thing that, that a lot of people don't do these days that they did back in their day is when another group was up singing, they got up and encouraged them, not standing Amen. back in the corner criticizing. They get up and encouraged them. Right. And when the ter- when the program was over, groups would get together and they just sit around and shoot the breeze. These guys can't yes. wait to get on their buses. That's, That's all I have to say. I just I love That's that book, and I hope that some of you else would get it as well. Thank you. I want to I, w- I want to chime in here a little bit. This is Swindell. Um, the first time I ever saw the, the, the two men perform was actually together. Uh, Reverend wow. Chief and Joe Lagan was both on the stage helping the Siamese twins sing this particular night in my hometown because a lot of folks didn't realize that the twins could not sing. But by the time June and Joe got through, you would have thought the Siamese twins was the war <laughs> You know, that's just how phenomenal the, the, the concert was. And right. just to see them throughout the 70s, because that's where I basically saw both of them work together, it was just phenomenal to see. And just how great Joe and the Clouds admired Reverend Junior's Cheeks is, it's the only album in gospel history where a group pays homage back to their mentor, which is the one that the Clouds did in honor of Reverend Junior's Cheeks. So that mm-hmm. speaks a lot of volume uh, yeah. for, for the two groups as well. Oh, thank you for sharing that. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Anyone else? Okay. Speak now forever hold you. Peace. (laughs) Forever hold you. You Oh, those were the good old days. Yes, I knew. Of course, that was like that. I got a chance to see both Reverend Cheeks and Joe Lagon perform. I saw Joe, Le- Joe perform at the beginning of his career, and I was at the last performance that he did at the, uh, down in Redondo Beach. Yes. So I, I, I got to see him at both ends of the spectrum, and that is one man that I've always admired. And mm. I'm so happy. You know, when you, when you set up these interviews, you you contact people and you just go over the specifics and that's that. But uh, uh, Deborah and I have been friends for a few years and and when I started talking to Judy, it's like we just like we knew each other all along because so we can talk for hours. So I really appreciate the friendship, not just for the for the interview, but we can talk off the air, on the air, about other things. Mm-hmm. So thank you all. 
Oh, thank yes, you. Thank you. This has been Amen. A, this has been such a blessing. It and really has. It's, uh, it really has. It's, uh, therapeutic as well for me. Oh, me and, too, honey. Uh, you know, for me, I still go through moments of sadness and wish you were still here. And I think for a daughter, we think that our fathers are invincible. I watched my dad over the years come back from heart attack, stroke, all at the same time, uh, mm. hip replacement. Mm. Uh, I mean, what that pneumonia, whatever it was, that appendix burst because he wouldn't go to the doctor. And every Uh-oh. time, Daddy always bounced back. So we expect always them to be like Superman with a cape. And even this last time when he was ill and God was showing me, you know, looking at him, if I had looked at him, really I would have known that God was preparing me for him to leave here. But uh, we always say, oh, you know, he's been through so much. He'll always bounce back. He's 80 years old. There's, that road takes such a toll on singers, and that's one thing um, – about the role you have to take care of yourself, you have to take care of your body, take care of your mind. Most of most singers die because they sacrifice so much the music that they neglected their health and they you know, you you can't make regular doctor's appointments. They wanted daddy, I remember to go on dialysis and wow. he said to them, I will never do that because I'll have to come off the road. And I'm like, Daddy, he's like, I'm not doing that. So oh, you know, and later on in life, as, uh, you know, it progressed, he had to do it. And he still found mm-hmm. a way to do it where he could do, administer his own personal dialysis and still stay on the road. He just refused to give up singing. We wanted him to come out here to California. He said, it's too far from my group. i got to stay out here at any cost. He was going to do his best Medication. to get on stage. You know what your dad told Deborah? I'll never. Uh-huh. Yeah, your dad was in New York, and I and I went to see him, and uh, and we were walking. It was really it was an amazing experience because you know he was in the green room and they had all these snacks. I said, Joe, you remember the day when you guys couldn't even get a bologna sandwich for free? Now you got to no. stop with exactly. Shit and, stuff. and so we we're walking to the stage, and I said, Joe. You really love this, huh? He said, Judy, let me tell you something. He said, if they ever tell me I can't do this, he said, y'all dig a hole and put me right in it. That's what he would say. <laughs> if I got to stop that, that, singing, that's, that's, the singer, that's, the singer, that's the singer's creed. That's right. Yeah, but it, that's the singer's creed. That. Everybody don't mean yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody don't mean But I know, I know for sure that he did mean that. He meant yeah. that. For sure, he just was not. He said, "I can't see myself sitting somewhere in a rocking chair." And no. he said, "If I don't do this, what am I going to do? What What am I going to? Wow. I don't play golf, and you know, whatever." But what I love and what I miss about the road, uh, for me, my passion now are the up and coming young singers or younger yeah. singers, uh, uh, because I mean, the older ones already they have it going on. They have it made in the fan base. The, uh, for gospel to continue, I feel that those who love the music need to invest in that deposit spiritually, financially, uh, in the lives of the younger people that are the next generation to carry it on. If we don't and we just criticize them all the time, oh, why they got on this and, oh, they singing too fast and the music is too loud, if they stop, this music stops. So my thing is to continue to love them, encourage them, because I'm going to tell you, being on the road, you see some of everything with gospel singers. Ain't nothing they're doing now wasn't done back then. It just was done more in secret. But well, you, you didn't know, have social thing, media neither. Exactly. And that's the difference. <laughs> that was yeah, the, you, did, that you was, didn't have social all you media. All had was word of mouth. All you, yeah. And people wouldn't believe it. You know, when people would say something about daddy. Uh, they'd be like, no, I'll, I'll never believe that about Joe. The right. one thing that disturbed me really about Dad's life was when we did have time after a program, we would go and we would sit down and eat. He would calm himself. Then here come the fans. Oh, Joe, look on. Can I have an autograph? Can, and I'd be like, can he just eat? 
Can he? Oh, Deborah, it's all right. And by the time you finish, because once one person call out who you are, then here comes, can I get a picture? Can I get a picture? But they really have no peace, you know, kind of nowhere. My favorite times with Daddy were in Troy, Alabama, which is his home, where he could just be himself, and he didn't have to worry about nobody bothered him. He ate all the wrong stuff and just did whatever he wanted to do. But he was free there because he was not in the public's eye. So that was my favorite times with him. Imagine that. Well, ladies, again, I thank you for your time. Gentlemen, everyone everyone who's had something to say to them, this was phenomenal. Thank um, you so much, everybody. Yes, hi. Dana, this is Valerie Fisher in New Jersey. Well, hello, Valerie hello. Fisher in New Jersey. Yes, I just want to let the, want these beautiful women of God to know that I thoroughly enjoyed the interview tonight. It was so uplifting and inspirational to me. I had the privilege of seeing Minister Cheek as well as uh, Minister Joe Lagan on many occasions, especially with Reverend Lagan coming into Philadelphia. I mean, every time he came, he tore the house down. I don't care what time of night. It could be in the wee hours of the morning. He always gave 110 percent. I thank God for Deborah. She is my Facebook friend. And at one point, we were uh, ministering one to another about the loss of our father. Uh, my yes, father was, was not in gospel. He was in boxing in the world. We had to share him with the world as well. So I know how it is when you have to be, like, selfless. But it's always that little yes. selfish peace that sometimes you want to hold on. But they wouldn't allow us to because they knew that they, as well as their fathers knew, that they had to be about their father's business and their respective right. um, jobs that they had to do. And I just thank God for each and every one of you women. I really 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 do and for the fathers who are legends and legendaries when you can just name give their name and the whole world know them beyond the borders thank you thank you thank you so much that was so awesome yes i'm about to cry now i'm almost in tears i know i got tears over here i told y'all it was a shift in this thing i knew it well see let me tell you something god says well, two or three are gathered in his name. And see, this platform, it's about kingdom, baby. Yeah. He's going to be in the midst. And everything that I do, we do on here, he's yeah. going to be in the midst. So he had to be in the midst on this evening. We had, he had to be because of the hell that the enemy tried to put on people, you know. It, baby, the God that we serve, he's a great big one. Woo! Yeah, he's able. He's able. He's able. But for me, yes, you know man. what? I'm grateful because, like I said, it's therapeutic for me just to reflect back on so many of the good times, you know, as a as a girl and as on the road or whatever, um, you know, because now we get caught up in what's going on now in our life and not uh, reflect, like Judy said, on the, the blessing that we had in having someone that God chose to do what they did. Mm-hmm. God God did that. God predestined us for this assignment, not just them, but, I mean, God even chose your kids just like he chose your parents. So I, I'm just grateful, and I just I want to, you know, I want to, I want to be more, and I want to do more, uh, not sing, but uh, Judy going to sing. That's her thing. Uh, you know what, but I, I want to be more. I'm going to get my because you are a singing woman. You put something on Facebook the other day, and I said, you know what, I'm going to get she on sure did. and whip your I heard it. Because you ought to be shame of yourself. Get your butt out there. Mm-hmm. You and your I husband do sing. Can, you and your husband I can sing, uh, brother. I do I do sing <laughs> quite a bit, sis, at my church. I do. But, you know, people want you to squall and holler like daddy. And, uh, you know, I'm not. The the quartet world is so competitive and oh just, my God, you know, man. I don't ever want oh to do God. that. I want to always do ministry and bless God's people. I just don't want to be caught up in that's never been my thing, never but, been my thing. You know, but like a lot of people. I, I do it when God says so, I sure will do it. Well, you know what? You you have an amazing gift, not just your voice, which is phenomenal, but your heart is so beautiful. Yeah. Man, oh my God! Now y'all gonna really make me cry. <laughs> the things you do in your community, you know, your 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 scholarship fund, your yes, 
work. I mean, you are such a blessing. And, and you know, somebody told me once that when our fathers sang, those weren't songs. They were prayers. So, Dana, I want wow. to know. Because, hmm. Dana, you said something, you know, well, I didn't know my father. Or Your father, when he accepted the call on his life, God assured him that you were going to be covered. Now, look at this show exactly. you're doing now. Look how many people you're blessing, you know. And, and in the kingdom of God, little is much. You think you're right. not very much, but your life is so important. This interview tonight wow. is the lives of many people. And had you not accepted the call to do it, you know, you'd be miserable. But your daddy prayed for you, baby. You know what? Thank you. For the beginning of time, our lives were already planned. Our, yes. God yes. wrote God. down. You know, That's he wrote word. it down from yes. beginning yes. to the end. So you are accepting the call. You're being obedient to the Spirit of God. And don't you ever doubt your importance because it's not, it's not you. It's what God has placed in you to heal and to, to love on people. And that's what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And that's what you better keep on doing because I'm going to get my switch for you too if you don't. Oh, oh Lord, not the switch. Oh, Lord, not the switch. Man, you I'm and just a- you back to 28th Street and Chitlin. We had a mulberry tree, baby. <laughs> and Mama tell me to go out there and get a branch quick. Ooh. Man, <laughs> you better not bring a skinny one back either. <laughs> you sure better not, baby. Lord have mercy. Y'all, I have so enjoyed myself. As Miss Val said, hey, hi. Hey, Deborah, this is your head. I mean, hi, Dana. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. We know who this is. We know who this is. Yeah, we do. I came in. I came in a little late, and so I'm going to have to re-listen to these beautiful ladies. Uh, a few years ago, uh, I reached out to Judy, and we became friends on Facebook. We briefly uh, conversated. This is Evangelist CJ, Renee. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always been a fan of this gospel music, and I was a fan of your father. I never heard him in person, but Lord knows I've watched him enough on video. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, uh, Mr. Joe Lagan, I was a great fan of his, and um, he was one of the ones who can get that Holy Ghost going. And um, one of my first big, big, big spiritual uh, deliverance accounts was with Mr. Joe Lagan. But um, I was not necessarily just raised in the Quartet Arena. Mom played the music. I heard it in the house, and she had the different albums. But my family were not just quartet people that just run out to quartets or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I went some, from time to time to some programs. When I really got involved with the quartet arena, I was probably about 19 or 20, and I was going myself, and I just fell in love with it. And as most of you all know, and Clay Graham was my favorite all-time lead singer, and the Pilgrim Jubilee is my favorite all-time group. But... I said that, and they really were, but then I have so many that was make to make with them. Uh, but what you all were saying about callings and stuff, you, you wonder sometimes uh, with me, I have no and some people will agree and some people won't, and I have the biggest problem with my son when it comes to me in the music industry and the quartet. But even though I got off into it later on in life and the life, 20 years, I've been deep off into it. I know for a fact, when I was a little girl, I used to want to sing, and I had my little cassette player and tape recorder trying to sing, and the folks told me early on I couldn't sing. So, you know, that (laughs) shit was my little (laughs) heart. But as time went on, I still had a love for music, especially gospel music, old hymns, and traditional music. And, yes, uh, I love that I too. ever did as I got uh, later on, as I um, started in ministry in 1991, I started with uh, teaching the youth and having a youth, youth group or whatever. And to raise money, I, I started asking groups to come to try to raise money. I soon found out that you really couldn't raise money having groups come because they want to be paid. So half the money will go to the group. But still, in doing that, I started doing it to raise money to take children on a, uh, a trip, and I always loved the music. I found out that it was my passion, 
And as I kept going, a lot of people got upset. And even still today, my son says that I should be working directly with my youth department and my youth organization. Crystal is up there tomorrow. But, no, I want to go do the quartet thing. And don't nobody want to hear that. That's old and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, even before my husband died, he supported me wholeheartedly. But he still wanted me to focus more on the youth. But then, but as I did the uh, promoting the program, haven't been real successful financially. But then, in order to um, make sure I can do it more better, like Dana said, she started the West Coast Wave. I went on radio, you know, and basically I went on there to help get the word out about the concerts. But as right. I went on and as uh, I kept on in what I was doing, God let me know that he was calling me out to evangelize as well. And uh, like y'all was saying about the groups and like y'all was saying about everything and about knowing your purpose, mm-hmm. and as he called me to evangelize, and as I went on radio, don't see well, don't pronounce well, but the anointing was there, and people received me, and people were being blessed. Mm-hmm. Okay, still one pronouncing stuff right, but then God said, as I went that direction, and as I was feeling that direction, and feeling that I was in my comfort zone, then I went on to get on internet and to reach out to the industry people, and I always advanced in that as well. And then uh, I went on to get on internet radio, and when I went on internet radio. And, and and Deborah has encouraged me so much mm. to make me feel that I'm in my place. Mm. But as I went on internet radio and just in general, I'm I'm always in my comfort zone, no matter what. But I ask the Lord sometimes, why is the thing that is most valuable to me and that I feel that I do so well and that the anointing is there? Uh, it can't make me no money, but I still feel comfortable. And I wouldn't trade it for the world because I feel that I know my place. That is my place. So with singers, that is a place to the grave. And I used to tell my husband, and I tell people already now, I tell my mom, I said, you take this from me, you take life from me. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. And, and Ms. DJ Ms. Renee was Ms. my DJ first uh, live internet radio. Wow. She was my first introduction to live uh, internet radio because we don't have a gospel station in Los Angeles as big as it is we don't have one and when I got on Facebook and you know hearing her TGGM she has really been a blessing to me um, Amen. you know before anybody else was doing it I don't know maybe somebody else was I didn't know about it but I got to know so many groups because we only know what's on our coast. I know what's on the West Coast. I would never get to hear uh, God's Posse, Roy and Revelation, and Judah. I would never get to know those groups if I didn't hear them on somebody's show, because many of them did not come here to Los Angeles. So that's one thing I want to say to all of you guys that are radio angels. Truly, you are angels, because yeah. you have people that are hospitalized, you know, even people institutionalized, people that can't go to church, people that are despondent, been church hurt, and don't want to mm-hmm. go to church. And you guys fill that void, and you introduce God to them if they just mm-hmm. tune in. Even us that are already saved, every day is not a good day. I don't care what nobody say. If they say it is, then, you know, I would love to live their life as as saved as you are and no matter how strong your faith is, it is tested. And I'm grateful that some days I can tune in to you guys and hear some songs that, you know, that, that bring us back up to where God wants us to be functional so we can bless other people. And, 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 and speaking of blessing other people, Miss, Miss DJ Renee, you say you don't have the monies financially to do what you do, but just think, listen at, back at what you said. You started here, then you went there, and you went there, and now you're here. God enlarged my territory, enlarged. and that's what he's done. That's what he's done for you. And so I even say to you and Miss Deborah at the end of what she just said, uh, continue to be blessings to others. Baby, you are a blessing to me. Not only t- did you take this platform that God blessed me with, but you took my radio uh, show and you, you put it on your station. Don't you? That was such an honor to me, so humbling to me. 
And then the other sister, uh, Stephanie McDonald, did the same, turned around and did the same thing. So the same favor of God, and that's what I'm com- coming at you with, DJ Renee. You don't have to worry about no money because loving favor is greater than any silver and gold, baby. That's what I've learned. And so as long as you have the favor of God, baby, let it rain on you. Because whatever favor he done sprinkled on you, I thank you that you done sprinkled a little bit on Dana. Just by sharing me with your ministry, you did that for me. I like what Deborah said, too, about uh, the people in radio and different things about reaching out to people who might not go to church or have got church hurt. I can remember when I went to the next level with the television broadcast and the way God ordained it to be formatted with the Sunday school lesson as well as the videos and the draw. And there were different people, even people who were already in church, said that when I offered the Sunday school uh, part of the television broadcast, which was another struggle to pay for to be on, but God placed me there and I stepped out on that, uh, they said that it encouraged them to want to go back to Sunday school. Hey, Amen. The See there? So, and so, when it's all, and you know, and all I do is I continue to tell myself, only what you do for Christ will last, and if you're doing things for Christ, no matter what it looks like, like you said, with the finances, and even sometimes if I have to suffer to do it, uh, it, 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 like you said, a favor and all the people that God has placed in my life because many times people donate from afar because, you know, they, they they see something in what I'm doing. So that's what keeps me holding on. And every time I think about it, I need to just let it go. Like some people may say that don't see it, then God will bless somebody to drop a donation or something like that just to keep me holding on. So. I just said to God be the glory. That's all I can say is to God Amen. be the glory. Amen. So well, I'm grateful. We're going to uh, uh, show the lanes real quick. I'm going to do these announcements. Then we're going to pray, and we're going to get over here because I know it's late on the East Coast, and we got East Coasters on here, Midwest, <laughs> and we, the, us West Coast people, we're going to stay up for a little while, huh? Oh, hey, hey, yes, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> listen, listen, again, I thank our wonderful uh, Daughters of Legends for coming on this evening. I love you with the love of Christ. Y'all my big sisters now. Hey, oh, hey. Yeah. Amen. 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 Listen, y'all tune in to the Gospel Court at Paradise, and, and that's with our very own Elder Lee Williams on PGTM Woo-hoo. Radio. Dot com. Shout out to all of our radio angels. Y'all keep us lifted in prayer because we need you. We need we and like Renee say, yes, that financial situation, but baby, with the favor of God, we're gonna be all right. So shout out to all of us, the radio angels. Y'all remember to go and like it and invite others to like our gospel networking page, and that's the West Coast Women Gospel Chat Line. Happy birthday to everybody celebrating a birthday in the month of April. Happy birthday, DJ Renee. Uh, DJ Renee was first. Archie Swindell was the seventh. Uh, Mr. Lamanuel La- Boykin was the seventh. Ron Clark was the eighth. Today is my little brother's birthday, Charles Uncle Chuck Hamilton, lead Woo-hoo. singer of the Zion. April 14th is our very own Deacon Frank Stewart birthday. Hey, he's the one, y'all, say once you hit this crack on the West Coast wave, that's what that line you have to come back. Happy birthday, Deacon Frank. Oh, Happy oh, birthday oh, to my little girl on April 17th. Kiki, she'll be 13 years old. Y'all pray for me. Lord have mercy. And then um, <laughs> uh, the 26th of April is Miss Gail Rosser birthday. She's the assistant to Evangelist Broadus Green. And April 27th is Evangelist Broadus Green, my spiritual mother, who is also a uh, rap icon, Snoop Dogg's mother. And so anyone looking for extra exposure or advertisement, reach out to Miss Lady Fran for Let's Make It Gospel, and her number is 919-418-1867. Again, that number is 
919-418-1867. If you have an idea for the West Coast Wave Gospel Chat Line, an artist, group, promoter, radio angel you'd like for us to showcase, please let me know, and we're more than happy to do so. Listen, on April 14th, we got some things going on on the East Coast and West Coast. On the West Coast, Saturday, we got the Gospel Bash for my little brother, at Mount Pilgrim Church in Compton, yes. we're going to have a Holy Ghost party for Uncle Chuck on Saturday. Yes, and Miss Miss Val, they taking a trip down to North Carolina for the fifth anniversary of Mr. John Thorpe. We are pushing for y'all to have a Holy Ghost party over there. On the 21st of this month, um, Renewed of the Carolinas Anniversary, a Quartet Traditional Music Summit in Atlanta, Georgia. Baby, we got it going on in this gospel. Let's keep it pushing. Y'all, our Thursday nights in April have been marvelous. On the first Thursday night, we had our topics from our gurus, uh, entitlement and greed versus maturity and humility. How do you present your brand? Tonight, we have the legends, the daughters of legends. We have June and Judy, the, Mr. Cheek's daughters, and, and, and we have yes. one of Mr. Lagan's beautiful girls, and that's Miss Deborah yes. Lagan Morris. We have more coming up for you in the month of April, so y'all stay tuned with us. On our prayer list, we definitely want to add uh, Miss Deborah and her family. Y'all, please keep yes. me and my daughter in your prayer. Elderly Titus Randall, who is the son of Sister Valerie. Uh, keep um, the Bree families in, in prayer. Keep the yes, Zion messages in prayer in prayer. The traditional gospel industry as a whole, y'all, we need to just keep praying. Gospel in general, help us to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. We need each other. Want to know. Anybody else got anybody we want to add also, to the also, prayer list? Also, we want to uh, add uh, the staple to oh, the, the prayer list. Yeah. Uh, with the pastor, oh, Yvonne, yeah. the pastor Yvonne on Tuesday, so we want to lift up Mavis and Purvis during this time as well. Yeah, I was okay. Got that. him. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Wow. Yes, and while, like I said, we got to keep these bereaved families in prayer. And like I said, just keep us all in prayer. Well, anybody else have any um, body for the prayer list? Valentino. My son, Valentino. Valentino. Then we got him. We praying for him. Well, if all minds are clear again, Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm a very thankful person, and again, I say thank you. I'm beyond grateful for every blessing that God gives to me, and tonight was definitely a blessing to speak with you ladies, so I'm grateful. So we're going to close in prayer, and I'm going to pray on tonight because I need to even lift some things off of me, Ms. Ms. Deborah, and the only way I know how to do that is to go to God in Give prayer. Give to God. Amen. Yeah. So all minds are clear. We're going to pray, and we're going to have a, a great sleep on tonight, a restful peace. Amen. Sleep. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we come to you on tonight, Lord, and we say thank you. God, thank you thank for the time. Uh, on tonight, God. Thank you, Lord, for the inspiration. Thank you, God, for the encouragement. Thank you, Lord, for these women to pour out about their fathers, these legends, Lord. Thank you for the legacy that these men left on this generation of gospel on today. God, I'm asking right now that you bind the enemy in this community of gospel, God. We're asking, Lord, that these new upcoming artists will look to our legacies, Lord, to our legends, Lord, and learn, God, educate themselves about what it is to be true artists in this field, God. Lord, I'm asking you to release yourself on the families who are in need right now, God. Every name that we call, God, on this prayer list, God, I'm asking you to touch every situation, God. Release yourself on the situation, God, because we need you, God. We ask that you send your comforter, the Holy Ghost, God, and allow it to comfort us. Spirit, God, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, you are wonderful, God, and we praise you all today. We magnify you all today, God. Lord, we yeah, asking God. you to save the save, the unsaved, God, and touch and, and, and heal, God, and 
ever, God. We need you, God, more than ever. Fill this land, God. We need you, God. Fill our leaders, God, the minds of your people, God. We're asking you to change them right now in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking you to go around the world, God, the highways, the byways, the jails, the prisons, the hospitals. Yes, God. God, we need you, God, on today. Our culture, the black culture, God, we need you on today, God. Help us to come together, God. Help us to stop the senseless killings on one another, God. Help us to stop the senseless uh, coming against one another, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And help us, Lord. To, 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 to show more love, God. Show more gratitude towards one another, God. We need you more than ever, God. We're pulling on you, God. We're calling on your name, Jesus, God. And say right now we rebuke you. We, you yeah. are defeated. Victory, victory is ours on this yes, evening, God. God. And we truly thank you. Thank you, God, for just being who you are in our lives, God. Lord, and we ask, God, that anything that's not like you, God, you remove it from us, God. We're asking you to search us, God. Take inventory of our souls, our spirits, God. And we're asking you to deposit more of you into us, God. So when withdrawals come out, God, people will see who you are, the true you. Help us to activate our faith even more and step out on who you are. In Jesus' name, we magnify you, we glorify you, and we lift you up. Amen, and we praise amen, God. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Jesus, thank you. I'm going to have to get the number, girl. That, that's Woo! Thank that's you, God. Thank you. Right Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you, God. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, oh, thank right you. Yeah. Magnify you, God. He's worthy. Yeah. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Listen. Y'all know I'm over my time on this evening, but I'm magnifying y'all and I lift yes, up. Sir. And again, I thank him and I thank you all for your time. Thank Listen, you. thank you. We've had a great, great discussion on this evening. Y'all know God is in the blessing business, so y'all get ready to be blessed. I'm your host, Miss B, signing off for this evening. God loves you, and so do I. Y'all be blessed and have a good night. Bye-bye. God bless you. Love you all. Thank you so much. All of the first-time listeners, this call will be recorded and will be